Hello again everyone and welcome to this video documenting a fantastic 91 Tollycraft 61 available for sale in Vancouver BC. As Hall 29 she's one of the final 61's to leave the Kelso plant in Washington. She's resided for the last 18 years in a custom boathouse which is also available in transferable freshwater moorage. For that time she's had a full-time caretaker who has a mandate to run her and exercise all systems and take her out for at least two hours per month in the off-season to assure reliable performance for summer cruising. The 61 is perhaps the most handsome collaboration between Ed Monk Jr. and Tollycraft Yachts. They created an incredibly accommodating three-stateroom two-head yacht with superb performance, ideally suited to the Northwest. There are huge exterior spaces for sunny days, the interior is incredibly accommodating, and the pilot house is nothing short of huge. Her equipment list certainly ticks all the boxes. She's NIAD stabilized. She has an incredibly powerful hydraulic biothruster, which is continuous duty. She's got a 14 and a half foot custom Navarania tender on the upper deck with a 60 e tech fully serviced and a power articulating davit to make launching and retrieving the dinghy an absolute breeze. If you desire further information or contact details, I encourage you to look below the video in the description section. All contact information will be provided there and it will periodically appear on the screen throughout the video. You will be placed in contact with the maintenance contractor who can describe all aspects of the vessel, her condition, maintenance and performance. This will be an incredibly detailed video. We will endeavor to touch every surface of the vessel and demonstrate every system on board. We will do engine cold start, we will do generator start, operate the water maker, the dinghy, we'll do a wide open throttle sea trial performance test and detail the one month yard period the vessel had in October of 2023 when the entire bottom was blasted to bare gel coat, she was surveyed, the NIAD fin seals were serviced, the PSS shaft seals were replaced, and she bottom paint system was rebuilt. She's very easy to view in Vancouver, British Columbia. Look forward to showing you the vessel. And without further ado, we'll get started with a close look. This video was recorded in March of 2024 we're idling in Vancouver Harbor it's a rather windy day here you see the two fuel fills she has two fuel tanks a total of 1,000 US gallons slightly more than that actually you can fill both tanks from either side of the vessel pilot house wing door with overhang. The overhangs are really nice for the rainy days. The two blue structures here on the foredeck are the lines and fenders. Under sunbrella covers there are stainless brackets. There are three Bulmar hatches on the coach roof for ventilation. Each cabin, head and salon have multiple means of ventilation to the open air to keep things cool. She's got a 110 pound Bruce anchor on a galley made electric windlass. There's 350 feet of 3 8 triple B anchor chain. Even though we're idling here and the stabilizers aren't working because we're not moving, she's incredibly steady. She does displace over 84,000 pounds. Down here are the two separate holding tank dockside withdrawal fittings. Windows are equipped with wipers and washers. Two separate water tank fills are below. The port side wing door has a teak screen which you can open from the inside to exclude insects. The 
easy walkways, all protected. These are the two fuel fills on the port side, so you can fill either tank from either the port or starboard side. The iconic Tollycraft porthole. Some looks at the bright work. She's incredibly easy to handle around the dock. She's very powerful with big propellers. They move a lot of water. Handling this boat is a very positive and reassuring experience. There is a full enclosure for the rear cockpit in blue sunbrella with windows, which isn't presently on board. It's in the boathouse. The dinghy's above with some floodlights and a back down camera. And a look at the beautiful teak rear bulkhead doors. We'll move into the salon now. A wonderful feature of the later Tolly 61 is the two teak doors on the back bulkhead both open outwards and can be pinned in place, creating an entirely open rear bulkhead for light and air. A mosquito screen is provided for this rear door. The television, of which there are two on board, is served by an 18-inch CTEL in-motion satellite TV system. The salon table is worth noting. It's custom ordered from Westport Shipyards and we will detail it more thoroughly later in the video as we progress. Headliners are in superb condition. All lighting is LED in cantaloupe fixtures. Over here below the stone counter you have an auxiliary depth sounder and the control for the sea recovery water maker. There are sliding windows screened on both sides of the salon for ventilation. You get lots of airflow when you open up those two big back doors. In the summertime is just wonderful. That table electrically raises and lowers. The galley is incredibly bright. Too bright for the exposure on the camera. Countertops are genuine stone. There's a Gen Air downdraft range with oven. Hardwood floor. A double door Gen Air refrigerator freezer. Bosch dishwasher and trash compactor. Large opening window above the sink with a screen. Stainless sink. A disposer garburator. Faucet here. Great airflow from the galley window when you're doing the dishes. These timbre doors open up. They conceal the microwave oven and the toaster. Lots of drawers and storage. Across the way are two very large pantries. More drawers and more storage. The galley slave is definitely part of the party in the salon. No problem there. Dishware is stored above. Up to the pilot house. A nice wide stairway with a sturdy handhold, all teak. Got a lovely stid helm chair in black leather. Helm console is uncluttered. Two teak handles overhead. There's a nice settee, the table. Storage below. This settee is a great place to relax while passage making. There's a wireless autopilot remote and the 22 inch navigation screens are easily visible from the settee. The stairway up to the bridge. Visibility from the helm here is excellent at all speeds. There's a large chart flat and storage drawers provided so charts can be stored flat. The upper helm has an ICOM 604 VHF radio, the autopilot control, the control for all of the loud hailers on the boat is here, and this is the enunciator panel for bilges and pumps and alarms. A pair of 22 inch color monitors, backup camera and engine room camera provided, 
a backup depth sounder. Out of the way here are communications microphones, wireless autopilot control, and anchor control. To port next to the manual windlass control is the NIAD system. You can see the fins deflecting. This system was fully serviced in October of 2023. On the back bulkhead, you'll notice we have the tank tender for water and fuel levels and the data plate which tells you how to operate the tank tender and the tank capacities. Port wing door has a lovely teak screen door that you can use to exclude insects, keep the ventilation. Electrical panels are in the companionway below and you can see just how excellent the visibility is forward from the helm. We'll move down into the accommodation area. It's a wide staircase, it's easy to get up and down. Take a look at the electrical panels. DC panels here on the left, AC panel on the right with generator selection controls. Here we have the inverter charger control and two new holding tank level indicators. Below, generator start and stop and a selector for the Glendinning Cable Master shore power system. Nice handholds here. You come down into the lower passageway and you're presented with the laundry center right away, storage up above. Got a nice stacked Bosch washer dryer, vents to the outside, the dryer, so it actually works. To the right there's a privacy door, into the master stateroom. A king size berth, nice easy walk arounds. There's a makeup table and mirrors to the right, television above. There's plenty of light in here. There's three opening screen cast stainless steel polished ports on the port side. Plenty of light and ventilation. Chest of drawers to port. I'm trying desperately to keep my own image out of the mirrors. I'm certain no one wants to see that. On the forward starboard bulkhead, there are two enormous hanging lockers, full size closets, they're cedar lined. Another multiple drawer storage there. And we'll move into the master head now, which is very bright. It's a lovely teak and holly sole. Vacu flush head is fully rebuilt. The entire sanitation system on this boat has been rebuilt and modified. Another one of those lovely cast polished stainless steel opening ports with screen. Got Corian tops. There's a ventilation fan in here. The shower's quite generous. It's actually one of those small step in bathtub style showers. It has a shower sump drain unit, another opening port, nice and bright. Kept extraordinarily clean. The problem we're having here, of course, it's so bright in here that the camera is having difficulty dealing with the exposure. Lower hallway. It's a nice wide space, easy to move. There's an overhead Bomar hatch with the ocean air screen system, so you can have either a blackout or an insect screen. VIP staterooms in the bow here. Got a walk around elevated queen bed. There are four of those lovely polished stainless ports with the armored glass. A larger Bomar hatch again with the ocean air system. Dressing mirror. 
plenty of drawers and storage. And again, a very bright space with lots and lots of ventilation. This is an upgrade port. The boat's equipped all with all of these. They're incredibly heavy duty and are in as new condition. Forward is access to the anchor locker. That panel swings up and is secured out of the way if you need to get in there. This is a really terrific stateroom. Looking aft. Very large storage below the floor. In the main hallway is what we call the tank room. And under here there's another access to the bow. There are accent lighting below the bed. Everything else is LED. The day head or guest head like the master is extraordinarily bright, has a lovely teak and holly sole. Both heads have stainless steel king heaters, Corian tops, opening ports, and forced air ventilation. Vacuum flush toilets on this boat are separated. The master and guest heads are entirely separate units. The idea being if there's an issue with one head, you can always use the other one. shower in the guest head is a little different from the master head. It's a full shower stall. It's very, very clean. It's lit. Ventilation fan. This shower drains via gravity into the port side drain system of the boat. Very easy to maintain. The starboard guest consists of two generous single berths that extend out under the side deck for exceptional length. There's custom fitted bedding, a nice hanging locker, there's an enormous amount of open storage beneath the berths, two of the fantastic polished stainless opening ports with screens. You'll see here a lot of the uh, Cushions from the uh, upper sun deck are stored here in the off season. A uh, big blue cushion for the top of the bridge freezer is here. Entirely open under the beds for storage. Very bright, airy space. Another Bomar hatch with the ocean air system. LED lighting. Over here you have the back of the laundry center with a full access panel you can remove. There's a heater in here like there is in every space of the boat. Up here on the flybridge, got quite a large open flexible space. There's a fiberglass structure on the port side which contains the isotherm ice maker, which was replaced two years ago, and the DCS stainless steel barbecue with rotisserie, which is served by two 10 pound horizontal aluminum cylinders here on the bridge under the settee. All cushions are navy blue sunbrella with custom covers that go over top to protect from sun. Radar Arch has lighting and speakers. There's storage under all the seating. Helm seat and companion seat, both with custom covers over navy sunbrella cushions. forward helm console is low profile, has a navy sunbrella cover, got the quick look at the boathouse construction with a mezzanine up forward and fully insulated ceiling. 
companion way down to the pilot house there. The teak deck is uh, extraordinarily heavy planks. It's very thick. It's in excellent condition. Upper helm comprises high nautic engine controls, which have been rebuilt. There's a bow thruster joystick. Full instrumentation, start stop, 12 inch color navigation system, which includes both engine room and cockpit backup cameras with reverse image. There's a really terrific deep freeze here on the bridge. Uh, runs off of generator or shore power. If you pull it down in temperature once a day, you can freeze whatever you want. Solid teak. Kingsley bait furniture on the flybridge. It's possible with the NIAD stabilization to have such things here. The custom Navarania 430DL Hypalon rigid hull inflatable dinghy with a 60E tech. Been fully serviced, ready to go. Boat has an optional teak deck package. really excellent condition. It's a rather heavy boat. It has a built-in fuel tank. So the 1500 pound fully articulating davit handles it with ease. We have two-year-old 12-foot Shakespeare Galaxy VHF antennas on both sides on swivel mounts. A pair of CTEL domes up on the arch. It's a full color HD digital open scan radar. This is the AIS transceiver antenna. Try to keep the vessel uncomplicated and uncluttered. The Bimini is Navy Sunbrella. It can be folded back against the arch and there is a nice zippered boot which goes over top to keep it neat. We'll segue here to a brief view of the dinghy on the trailer. The trailer is not included. Every year she's taken out of the water and stored and serviced. Gives you an idea of how well she runs. This particular photo was taken in January of 2024 when the dinghy's full springtime service was performed this year. So a brief redirect back to the salon to demonstrate how nice it is to have these two teak doors which you can pin open. It's wonderful in the evening. You get such a great view over the transom, the cockpit. The airflow is amazing. It just adds so much to the ambience of the boat. A very modern feature. And something we're really proud of is the... Uh, table here in the salon. It was custom ordered from Westport Shipyards. It's a custom made burl table and it has a couple of tricks. Not only can you slide it in and out and secure it in whichever position you choose, it has an electric lift system so you can drop it right down to cocktail position or bring it up if you chose to dine at the uh, salon table. And it goes quite high. It actually would work for standing cocktailing as well, I guess. Really fantastic. Find the same table on the larger Westport motor yachts, and that's where the owners saw it. We'll just run up to the bow to inspect the anchor package. It's an incredibly powerful electric galley-made windlass the Gypsy 
and a capstan on top. It can be controlled with a wireless hand remote, 110 pound Bruce anchor, or buttons at the foredeck. There are also controls at each helm station, but we found that the uh, hand control is incredibly convenient to use. It not only controls the chain up and down, but it incorporates a road counter. So you can walk all the way around the boat with this and control the anchor winch. You can even command it to automatically put down a certain distance of chain by the touch of two buttons together. It's very handy for when you're short-handed. You can tell the anchor to go out and then back down. There is a freshwater wash down here which can be selected between fresh and salt by turning a valve which is located down in the tank room. We've never used the salt water function except to try it because the water maker provides so much water at 70 gallons an hour that it's never an issue. Well now we'll get to the fun part. We'll open the hydraulic hatch in the lazarette, head below. We'll do a full engine room equipment tour. We'll take her out for a sea trial and we'll document with video the full hollow procedure on the bottom of the boat that was just performed in October 2023. We'll head down into the lazarette space now. Please keep in mind that this boat is maintained at all times in a ready-to-go condition. So she is equipped with some of her cruising equipment. Extra shore power lines are here, extra dock lines, tow rope for the dinghy. There's a watertight door here to the engine room space. This is a foam fire extinguisher for engine room use, in addition to the boat's fire suppression system, which is permanently installed. That stud on the wall is one of two, where we carry our spare propellers that are included with the vessel. We have our toolbox. We have our water maker here. It's a 1400 gallon per day sea recovery unit. We built a platform for it. It can be run automatically, so it back flushes itself. Makes about 70 to 80 gallons an hour in the summer, a little less in the winter. Steering. The steering ram was removed and rebuilt by Olympic Drives in 2021. She has aero-equipped steering lines. Over here is some of the control equipment for the Glendinning Cable Master System, which retrieves and deploys the 50 amp shore power cord. This system was removed and rebuilt in 2021 with new limit switches, exterior cap, etc. The fire axis here is required by Transport Canada. An emergency reboarding ladder. Outboard you can see, past the cable master drum, you can see the mufflers. That's a duplex circuit breaker to protect the incoming shore power from the Glendinning cable master. Laz, and we're going to demonstrate the water maker, which is a sea recovery unit. You can see over there the, uh, it's a SRC 1400. It makes 60 to 70 gallons an hour. I'm going to operate it for you now. The unit presently has 1,246 hours on it. We changed the oil in the crankcase at 1,211 hours. We'll start by running the boost pump. Boost pump was changed for a brand new unit last year. We'll start the unit. Okay. making just under 60 gallons an hour. Each of these lights indicates uh, 25 parts per million, so there's 50 parts per million total dissolved solids. The system is operating at 800 PSI. Up here we have a UV sterilizer and this hose here through that valve you can use to fill a bottle. Right now the unit is making 58 gallons an hour.
stop the unit and we'll go to the freshwater flush. Freshwater flush on this unit can be set to a timer. It's a soft start unit so you don't have to come down and adjust the uh, uh, system pressure when you're usually using the equipment. Okay, we move into the engine room through the uh, watertight door from the lazarette and uh, immediately there are a twin pair of Onan generators. They're model 15 Mike Delta Lima. They have about 2800 hours on them. Engine room is quite bright. We'll move forward and go over some of the uh, equipment installed. She has duplex Raycor 1000s for the mains. So one is used and one is held in reserve. The Magnusine 2812 Magnum Energy Inverter Charger. Significant pre-filtration for the water maker. Um, starting with this valve here, so you can isolate the back flush for the water maker. You've got a carbon brick here, which helps remove the chlorine from the back flush water. There are two Monell plankton screens for pre-filtration. You have a 5 micron commercial pre-filter here, and the water separator is there. There's a spare commercial pre-filter over there, an element. Looking behind the generator is the compressor for the Buell air horn system. It's a Buell Strombos air horn system on this boat. It's extremely loud. We mentioned earlier that the boost pump for the uh, water maker was replaced last year. A brand new unit, all new hoses. There's a seacock in the back for the water maker with a screen. We have a two year old 18,000 BTU planar diesel furnace which heats the salon and galley of the boat. And it has under here a custom muffler which is wrapped in the Nomex there. It's extremely quiet outside and inside. It's a great furnace. So down here is a small 12 volt battery charger. It's a Protec 4 three step unit which charges the generator start batteries. And by turning the switch here, you can use it as an emergency backup charger for the house bank. We keep uh, main engine oil here. We exclusively use Dello 100 SAE 40 in the Detroit main engines. Uh, nothing but that. And uh, we just changed the um, PSS shaft seals. In October of 2023, we installed two new PSS shaft seals. This is one of the old ones. Just We kept it just for fun. And we've got some spare PSS uh, tit screws here. And the O-rings left over. All the hoses for the generators the intake and exhaust hoses were changed three years ago. The, all of the sea strainers were removed and rebuilt. The baskets were replaced, glass polished, all new Wonderflex certified hose. Um, you can see here, there's a small Raycor 500 for the generator, one on each side. This is where you select for the oil change system. You can select the port engine oil or the port generator oil in and out. We leave that in the off position. We changed the uh, Tollycraft, the hoses for the water injection in the, uh, um, for the stern tubes have been changed. All the fuel lines on the boat are aeroquip, they're formed hose. There's no rubber hose with clamps. 
the Raycor filters have vacuum gauges on them. We go to the other side, see one sound shield on the port side. We have dry erase boards on each side of the door at the back so we can make notes for our, our um, service as required. Starboard side generator, slightly less hours, about 2700 hours. This is the generator technical sheet. They're both identical. They're just switched fore and aft to fit left and right. Um, starboard side of the boat, we have a Raymarine engine room camera here. Um, in October of 2023, we installed a brand new stainless steel Torrid 30 gallon hot water tank. Uh, to replace the original tank that's lasted 30 years. We put new silicon hose, new fittings. We have a new 24 volt battery charger. It's a Pronautic 2420 on the bulkhead here. That takes care of the four 8D engine start batteries. Again, primary and reserve Raycor for the mains with shut off so you can switch from one to the other on the run. Um, generator 500 series Raycor and again the th this allows you to change the oil in and out of the bow thruster, hydraulic oil, the engine oil, the generator oil. Uh, we have a central vacuum system throughout the boat. Uh, over here we have again brand new lines coming in for the generator for the generator water intake and we changed all of the exhaust lines on the generators. This one you can see that's a brand new exhaust line going aft. Uh, these are our operational spares, fuel filters both primary and secondary for both the main and the gen. There's a spare starter motor for the generators, they're identical. The two pink top bottles are the Detroit Power Cool that we use. Uh, got the big mufflers there, exhaust pipes. So that part's pretty good. Both generators, three years ago we removed the entire cooling systems from both generators. We took the exhaust elbows, the pumps, the uh, heat exchangers out and had it all rebuilt. She has stainless steel exhaust elbows on both generators. Both generators have been converted to electric fuel pumps because the uh, original pumps on these generators are no longer available from Onan. They both have in the last three years new raw water pumps, completely new Sherwood pumps. There's an electric priming button. You press that you can prime the generator, it's no problem. Um, the injectors have been rebuilt at Fred Holmes Fuel Injection. The glow plugs have been replaced. Both engines have new starters and they work really, really well. I'm going to do a cold start on this generator. This can also be started from the pilot house. And away she goes. So you can hear the prime, click, click. There's a little breaker here we installed for the fuel pump primer. That all works really well. So that's the generator section. I'll attach photographs of the services performed to the generators with the cooling systems. Uh, all of the cooling system services were performed at uh, Port Moody Auto and Air by Gary, my good friend, and uh, it was found to be in excellent shape. Interestingly, these generators don't have any zincs. Somehow they have a balanced um, electrical potential. There's no evidence of any corrosion on the generator up to that point, and we're still in really good shape. Another interesting item on the uh, 61 Tolly, this one in particular, she has in every space at least one high water bilge alarm. 
So there's one aft, one forward in the engine room. There's one in the lazarette space. And of course, every build space does have one. There's a 2,000 gallon per hour pump in the lazarette. There's a 2,000 gallon per hour pump here in the engine room. At the forward end of the engine room, below the uh, fuel control manifold, there's another 2,000 gallon per hour pump and another bilge alarm flipper. So that's very convenient. Main engines are Detroit 8V92TA. These are the factory engines. They are 735 shaft horsepower. They're mechanical engines. There's no D-deck. The starboard engine was rebuilt in frame by the local Detroit dealer, uh, Cullen Detroit Diesel Allison, Western Canada Detroit distributor. Uh, it was rebuilt completely in frame in uh, 2010 due to a issue with a shell covering the intake, the raw water intake. So the port engine has about 2,700 hours. The starboard engine has about 1,000 hours. Uh, they both start in instantly. I will start them for you. Every time we've done an oil change on this boat, and we do that every year, regardless of hours, in the fall generally, before she's put away, we do an oil change and we use finning caterpillar oil sampling. We've got 15 years of finning caterpillar oil samples for the vessel. Strictly, we used Detroit Diesel branded filters on the boat. Uh, we always marked the hours. All the services were per performed September 15th, 2023. She has minimal hours since. We had a long yard period in October of 2023 when we replaced the PSS shaft seals and the stabilizer lower fin seals. So on this side, we've got a pair of pumps. This is an oil change pump, which corresponds to the yellow valve there. So on this side, we can fill and drain the starboard engine, the starboard generator, oil, and outboard, and I'll show you that a little later. There's a huge uh, aluminum oil tank for the uh, bow thruster system. Now this boat is equipped with a 12-inch uh, um, HPS bow thruster. It's a stainless steel bow thruster, a commercial unit. It's about 40 horsepower. It's very powerful. It's activated by this pneumatic system here. So there's a pneumatic system which uses the uh, Buell compressor, air compressor for the horns, to activate this um, lever, which then brings the PTO in for this monster um, hydraulic pump. Now that then provides hydraulic fluid up to the bow for the bow thruster. So it's a continuous duty unit. So everything on this engine was completely rebuilt. Uh, last year, we rebuilt the 24 volt alternator on this engine and we removed all of the uh, exhaust plumbing here and replaced all of the tubing. When we replaced the uh, sea strainers three years ago we did all of the intake hoses at that time. So these are new hoses on both sides. Um, they are certified all the way down to the water intake over there. Now the all of the ball valves do move freely, easy to do. So here you have the starboard engine oil filter, another Detroit filter. Um, so the engines oil change every year. The Walker air sep were replaced five years ago and are cleaned every year, sorry, every two years. So they were done in January of 2022. So that's about 200 operational hours. They have the uh, telltales on top of them. Um, we look over here. This also has been replaced. This is the water injection for the stuffing box. And this is the cooling water going out to the NIAD stabilizer. So we've got new hoses here. They're Goodyear. They're fuel rated, fire rated hoses. Um, new fittings here. This alternator is a 12 volt alternator. It's engine driven off the rear accessory drive. That was removed last year. It was completely rebuilt. 
and we are using a Belmar ARS5 uh, three-step regulator to control that alternator. So we made this alternator externally regulated and that allows us to run the boat all day without worrying about um, using the generator. So you don't need to run a generator unless you want to use the, uh, the range uh, for cooking. Um, both starter motors were rebuilt in the last six years. So in October of 2023, we removed on both engines the transmission oil coolers and took them to Gary at Port Moody Auto and Air. Uh, the reason for that was we had a bit of growth of um, like salt or sodium growth here. So we removed them and had them both done. That was just before we went to the yard for the uh, bottom service. Um, we do the secondary filters on the engines every second year. We use a purolator filter for that. Five years ago, we removed the cooling systems from both main engines completely and took them to Gary. Uh, that would mean we removed the main cooling stacks from the front here in the tank. Uh, we replaced all the little drain valves here. So they're all fresh and new. Uh, we replaced all of the bonding on the engine with new anchor boat cable green 8 gauge when we replaced the cooler. All of the hoses on these engines are silicon. Okay. We even replaced the uh, feeds here. That's a new Detroit diesel part. Okay. Engine's easy to maintain. There's two zincs in the uh, gear cooler. There's two zincs in the uh, one on each side up here in the um, uh, main heat exchanger. Okay, you got new rad caps. There's two little Glendinning filters up there for the crankcase gas system. That's easy to deal with. There's no zincs on the uh, port side of the engines. There's one zinc in the back, which is in the, the raw water pump. Now, the raw water pumps on this boat were removed three years ago and completely rebuilt and replaced. So new um, inserts, they have a ceramic insert inside them. We do the main engine impellers every two years, regardless of hours. Okay. So this is the Nyad uh, stabilizer uh, fluid conditioner here. We just changed the oil and filter on that unit in October of 2023. Okay. You can see the condition of the model 252 Nyad stabilizer actuator unit. In October of 2023, we dropped the fins and we replaced the lower seals, the Belleville washers and the end stoppers. So that's all been serviced and there are videos here that will include that information. If we go outboard on port, that's the Tollycraft main electrical cabinet over there. Now this boat has a series of two volt cells. There are 12 two volt Yuasa flooded cells here on this side. And that's the main house battery. So that's a 20 year battery. It's incredibly powerful. And that's your house bank. So we'll come back out. We've got our little engine overflow tanks here. We use our labeler to tell you when we last did the zincs. So the zincs were last done in uh, September 2023. So we'll be doing them again in March. We do the zincs every six months unless we change our location. If that's the case, we have to look at the zincs a little more closely. Here in this boathouse, we got a pretty good handle on zinc degradation. Um, two new diesel furnaces on board, two new fuel pumps. One here, one here. They have shutoff valves for them. The factory Tollycraft fuel manifold allows you to control generator and main engine fuel supply and return. You have full instrumentation here for the main engines. I'm going to start these for you. Um, the tachometer is not connected. This is a directly driven tachometer and that's why this cable is kind of hanging down. It's not connected to anything. It's a Bowden cable. 
because she has a Glendinning synchronizer, we needed to use that tack drive for the Glendinning synchronizer. So this one doesn't work, but the other ones are engine turn gauges, right? So that's good. Same thing with this engine. We service both engines at the same time. There are no belts on these engines. Everything is direct driven on the back, okay? So zinc here, just a twin to the other one. So as we go outboard here, this is the uh, Hynotic control uh, terminal block and a Hynotic engine control system. All of the engine control sending units, that is the levers at the helms, have been rebuilt with uh, Teleflex kits. They operate really nicely. I'm going to pan down here and show you the Nyad actuator unit on this side. We still have the Nyad factory do not remove tag. It runs great. Okay, so excuse me while I wiggle in here. It's quite possible to work in here, there's no problem. So under this area we have four 8D batteries. They're just maintenance free 8D flooded batteries. These are engine start. We use two of them or both of them. Up here you have the tank. It's a 40 gallon tank for the um, thruster. return filtration for the thruster. And I'm going to pause the video here and pick it up in a second. Okay, so I'm back outboard of the starboard engine. To my left here is the tank for the uh, bow thruster. What you see on the wall there is an air dryer for the compressor system, the air compressor, which uh, controls the air horns and the um, uh, actuator for the bow thruster. It's a pneumatic actuator. You can see the top of the engine here, walker air step on this side. Um, we have the new, newly serviced, uh, um, this is a transmission oil cooler for the starboard engine, and new silicon hose down here. We'll come back over here so you can see, hopefully there's enough light. Okay, so Hynotic system control here. We exclusively use the Hynotic um, glycol mixture okay we have our steering reservoir over here the hynotic steering reservoir so this is the starboard engine reservoir there's another reservoir on the outboard of the port engine for that this is the automatic pilot pump so this is a constant running pump um, it's huge it runs all the time and it well the pump is constantly turning and it just sends fluid left and right now this boat has uh, a pretty good performance. She can really get up and go, so you need a very powerful autopilot pump. So this one has been really excellent. Um, this is the battery switch which allows you to parallel the um, uh, start batteries, like we could run them on one and then you'd have two batteries to start and then two in reserve, or put them on both, it's your choice. This breaker here is for the um, master electronics. Some of the electronics on this boat operate off the 12, 24 volt start bank. Some operate off the 12 volt bank. The idea is to give you redundancy. If you lose one bank, you'll still have half a set of electronics to go. Um, these engines have block heaters. They're thermostatically controlled immersion heaters. We do not use them. Never had a need to. So that's the outboard side of the starboard engine. So you can see it's quite not so bad to get in and out. Some of these boats, people tend to install equipment here on the walls, which makes it impossible to work on them. And uh, that's not the way we do things. We try to think about service before we make any installations on this boat. Um, yeah, so I'll pause it here and we'll go out, we'll start the mains. So we're back here again in the center. When we removed the cooling systems from these engines, we uh, changed all the bolts. We used proper alloy bolts with proper anti-seize on them when we pulled it all apart. Uh, we use exclusively Detroit Power Cool. Uh, there's a huge amount of coolant in these two engines. I think there was something like uh, uh, 40 gallons of coolant between the two motors and I'll include photographs of the buckets of coolant and of the tube stacks. We removed the main tube stack which is in here. It's a big square tube stack which you pull out here. It weighs, weighs a ton. This is uh, the uh, multi-cooler. So in the back here you have um, a boost cooler here. 
and back here is an oil cooler. So this actually is what cools the uh, after cooler, which is up under there. So this one was completely rebuilt. On the port engine, we actually replaced it with a brand new C-Camp unit at that time because there was an issue with it. Um, so that was done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start this engine. I'm going to put my hand, I'm going to try to demonstrate this to you. It's not easy with a 92. And I've got my hand on it. It's cold as a stone. Like that's the cylinder head, right? Right there is the cylinder head. So as you can see, I've got my fingers on the cylinder head. So this, this engine's stone cold. It is the end of February. I'm going to hold the stopper and I'm going to roll it. pretty good startup. So that's the newer engine. This is the original engine. Again, this one also has the immersion heaters in it. That's what these plugs are for. So if you want to heat her up in the winter, you can do so. We're going to start this engine. So the zincs were done in uh, September. The Nyad oil filter was done in September. When we did the Nyad lower seals in October. Impellers were done August of 2022. So they're coming up due. And we do the gear oil and the gear oil strainer um, every three years. So it's about 350 hours on this boat. So we use actually, it's a twin disc high performance gear we use actually the same oil as the engines. We use the Dello 100 SAE 40 in the, in the transmission and we clean the suction strainer in the transmission at that time. So this is our October 2023 yard period where the hull was blasted to bare gel coat. I'm going to walk around the boat and show you what she looks like. Bow thrusters here. We exposed all the underwater metal and found it all to be in perfect condition. With no issues with the hull absolutely no evidence of any time in the boat's life that she's ever been aground or repaired. There are no patches in the keel. Nyad fins were removed. The exterior water pickup strainers for the main engines were removed. It was all blasted, inspected. We have the new last year blades that we installed in head of the Nyads to replace the originals. Heading aft Main engine raw water intake is here ahead of the stern tube. There's the little scoop that feeds water to the stern tube and the generator water intake, all clean. Not all pink and deteriorated. The bonding system's obviously working well. Two and a half inch Aquamet propeller shafts. Cutlass bearings are great. Bronze V struts also great. The rudders on this boat are actually a composite. They're a plastic or rubber material. They're not fiberglass. Trim tabs are in excellent condition. Double ram, no leaks, no problems, no deterioration. This boat is built in a split mold. 
And that's why you see that stripe there. Other tab looks great. Zincs are working. Propeller and V-strut in fine shape. The cutlasses look great. Same thing here. Raw water intakes. No problems. Nyad fin post and last year's new fin blade. You have to be careful around those. I've whacked myself on them a few times. Another thing we did in this haul out was a new boot stripe. It turned out really fantastic. You can see the stainless steel bow thruster. It's in great shape. And here's the starboard side stabilizer fin ready to be recoated. So here we'll demonstrate the Nyad shaft all cleaned up and ready. These are the old lower fin seals we've removed. We replaced them with new. A look up into the cavity indicates everything is in really good shape. This is the second time in five years we performed this service on this boat. We reinstalled with new Belleville washers and new end plugs. We were able to get three layers of Interprotect 2000E on the hull before the Micron CSC black anti-fouling paint was applied. We were able to paint all around the usually inaccessible areas on the Nyad fins before we reinstalled them and torqued them into place. Well, as you might imagine, it was sure a relief to be heading back to the water after a month in the yard. A lot of hard work, contractors, expense. We got the props all tuned up, coated them with the Pettit prop spray. The NIAD system was all ready to go, so we had a three hour, 10 knot cruise in some somewhat sporty conditions around to North Vancouver. Gave the NIAD system a really good test. You can see it operating well here. She's rock solid, so we had no issues there. And happily, our new PSS shaft seals and freshly balanced propellers turned out to be just fine. It was great to get that done too. So what I think I'll do is stop talking now and let you enjoy a maximum performance pull on this great Tollycraft 61. That's my friend Ross, came along to give me a hand. And here we go.
touch briefly on the uh, Buell air compressor system. It's a 12 volt system, which is pressure regulated in the engine room. And that Buell compressor provides air to the uh, ship's main air horn system, which is a Buell Strombos horn system. It also provides air for the pneumatically activated bow thruster system. So it's a terrific set of horns and you know who doesn't like uh, honking the horns so I'm going to give them a blast here. We've just had the uh, trumpets re-chromed. It looks terrific and you really get everyone's attention. So three, two, one. I don't know how that's going <laughs> to appear through the uh, little camera's uh, microphone. We'll give it one more. It's a lot of fun. You get everybody's attention. It's the way it should be. Well, thank you very much for making it this far. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation on this excellent, great performing, wonderful, reliable yacht. She's ready to go right now. The caretaker will be available to provide anyone with any information they need. The vessel can be operated at any time. She's completely ready to go. Why not come by, take a look. You can find our contact information in the description section below the video. Thanks very much and have a great day.